What's going on guys, Alex here, and today I have the brand new Google Pixel 10 Pro Fold. And if you recently picked up this phone for yourself and you're wondering what are some of the first things that you should do, you came to the right video because I'm gonna show you some settings, tips and tricks, and just overall things that you need to enable first on your brand new phone. So let's not waste any time and get right into the video. All right guys, the first thing you should always do on any new phone that you get is go into your phone settings, scroll down to system, and right here where it says software update, go ahead and check if there are any available updates for your phone because your phone was manufactured at a certain point and it could have been sitting in a box for a while before you bought it and it was sent to you. And since then it could have had some updates. So just make sure to go in here and check if your phone has any updates. And if it does, definitely be sure to update it so you have the latest bells and whistles and security patches for your phone. The next setting you're going to want to change is to go into your phone's display settings and make sure that if you have your phone in light mode, to switch it to dark mode because all modern phones have OLED displays and that means that any pixels on your phone that are completely black will be off entirely because OLED displays have the ability to control individual pixels and any pixels that are black will be off entirely and your phone is going to use much less battery to power your display and as you're using your phone over the day scrolling around the system UI and just using all of your applications that is definitely going to add up to save you lots of battery life. Now while we're in these display settings, the next thing we're going to do is scroll all the way down to the bottom and make sure that smooth display is enabled and what this is going to do is bump your refresh rate to 120 hertz. And this is going to make your phone much smoother when you're using it and definitely improve the overall experience. But do keep in mind that this is going to use more battery, but I definitely think that this is a worthy trade-off. Now just swipe up a little bit until you see screen timeout and make sure that yours is set to 15 or 30 seconds. Mine is set to 5 minutes because I don't want my screen constantly falling asleep and locking on me. But you definitely don't want to be burning unnecessary battery life. So setting it to 15 and 30 seconds is the best choice. And down here make sure to enable screen attention because now what your phone will do is use the front facing selfie camera to see if you are actively looking at the phone so that if you are reading a long article or looking at a photo it won't keep dimming on you and forcing you to keep having to tap on the screen to keep it awake which can definitely be annoying and enabling this feature is going to solve that problem. Next is a setting that I change on all of my Android phones and it is to make the phone faster by increasing the speed of animations and what animations are are anytime you open up any applications or you exit applications anytime you're navigating around your phone's system UI all of these are animations and you can speed them up to make your phone feel faster and to do this we're going to go into our phone's settings scroll down to about phone and then in here, we're going to go all the way down until you see build number and just tap on this a whole bunch of times until it asks you for your pin or password. And once you enter it, you're going to see that it says you are now a developer. And now what we can do is go back into the main settings, go to system. And if you swipe down a little bit, you'll see a new option here called developer options. And if we go into here, there is a setting. If you swipe down until you see something called window animation scale, transition animation scale and animator duration scale. And you can see that by default, they're all set to 1x. But what we're going to do is tap into here and set it to 0.5x. And what this is going to do is double the speed of the animations on our phone. So now anytime we are opening or closing apps, they're going to be twice as fast. And this is going to make your phone feel much faster. The next thing to do is to set up your wallet so that you can quickly make NFC payments with your phone so you no longer need to carry your credit card everywhere you go. So to do that, just search for the wallet app on your phone right there. Select the view wallet and right here just select add payment card and now just go ahead and add your card in here and what's really great about this is not only can you add your credit cards but you can also add boarding passes for flights and even loyalty programs that you're a part of. Alright so here we go I've added my credit card in here and now the next thing that we're going to do is add the shortcut to be able to make the payments from our lock screen on our phone just to make it quicker and easier to make these payments. So what you're going to want to do is go to your phone's lock screen and then we're going to long press on our lock screen to edit it, tap customize. And now when you go down here, you'll see shortcuts, select that. And you can see we have a shortcut right here for our smart home devices. But if you don't have any smart home devices, you can definitely change this to something else. And what we can do is instead select that wallet that we just set up. And now you can select right shortcut and also add something else onto here. So we can add something like the flashlight and then hit apply. And now we can turn on or off our flashlight or access our wallet and we don't even need to unlock our phone. All right, guys, the next thing we got to do on our Pixel 10 Pro Fold is to enable the always on display because by default, you can see when I lock my phone, there is no always on display. So we can't see the time, 
any notifications or the date or the weather. So what we're gonna do is unlock our phone and then go into settings, swipe down to display and touch. And right there, just enable the always on display. And there we go. Now, when we lock our phone, you can see we have that always on display so we can quickly check the time, date, weather and see if we have any notifications. Next, what we're going to do is go back into our phone settings and go to notifications and enable notification history because if you ever swipe a notification away accidentally before you were able to see it, the only way to go back and check what that notification was is through notification history and in here you'll have all the history of any notifications that ever came in on your phone whether it's a phone call an email something from facebook instagram TikTok. doesn't matter all the notification histories will live here and you can always come back here to check what you might have missed we can also go back to those notification settings and if we swipe down a little bit you'll see an option here for allow notification snoozing and this is a really cool feature because what it will allow you to do is when you get a notification you can snooze that notification for a certain amount of time, like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, or maybe an hour. So if you're busy right now and you can't return somebody's phone call or message, but you don't want to just swipe the notification away and forget about it, you can snooze the notification and you will be reminded about it later, hopefully when you have some time to get back to that person. While we're in here, you can also go ahead and enable flash notifications. I know a lot of people like this because your phone might be on vibrate or silent, and if it's not on you or in your pocket, you might not even feel that you have a notification, but when you enable camera flash and screen flash your phone's camera and screen will flash when you get a notification and that way you will have a visual cue that you got a notification so you'll know even if your phone isn't on you another thing i would suggest you guys change is how long notification pop-ups stay on your screen so anytime you get a notification by the time you take your phone out out of your pocket or you pick it up off the table that notification might already disappear but you can actually change how long it will stay on your screen so that you can fully read what that notification is about and to do this we're going to need to go back into our main settings page and then swipe down to accessibility look for timing controls right here select time to take action and you can change it from the default behavior to 10 seconds, 30 seconds, or all the way up to two minutes. Now you probably don't need it to be any more than 10 seconds, but if you find that the default one is a little bit too quick, you can definitely go ahead and change it and those notifications will now stay on just a little bit longer. And while we're on the topic of notifications, what I want you to do is go back into your main settings page, go to display and touch, select lock screen, and right here, notifications on lock screen, swipe to the bottom and remove this toggle for show sensitive content. And this way, if anybody sends you maybe like a password or an authentication code or some kind of banking details, it will not show that on your lock screen. Now just go back one in this setting and here select add text on lock screen and here you can put an alternative phone number or an email that will show up on your phone's lock screen so that if anybody finds your phone they will have a way to reach out to you to return the phone to you because obviously they can't unlock your phone without your pin or password or your fingerprint so just put an email here or somebody's phone number who you trust and hopefully if anybody ever finds your phone along the way they will be nice enough to return it to you. Also in these lock screen settings is a cool feature called now playing and what this will do is identify songs playing around you. So if you're ever driving in a car and a radio plays a song that you don't know or maybe you're at a mall and you hear a cool song, your phone will automatically listen to and identify those songs and display them on your lock screen. And if you're driving and maybe you don't want to look at your phone while you're driving, you can always come back here and go to now playing history and see the entire history of any of the songs that your phone might have identified so you can go ahead and download them to your playlist. All right guys, next what we're gonna do is improve the call quality on our phone and to do this, go into your phone settings, select sound and vibration and swipe down until you see clear calling right there and go ahead and enable this feature. And now what's going to happen is anytime you are on a phone call, if you are walking around outside and there's like construction noises going on around you or you're walking near a highway and there's just a lot of background noise, your phone will identify those sounds and suppress those volumes so that the person you're talking to is not going to hear all that background noise, but only be focused on your voice. And while we're talking about phone calls, another thing that you should absolutely enable is to stop spam calls. They are annoying and it happens to all of us. I feel like there's just always spam callers these days, but thankfully there's a really cool feature you can enable by going into your dialer app, tapping these three lines up here, select settings, and right here at the top, select caller ID and spam and just enable this feature that says filter spam calls. And just like it says right here, it will prevent suspected spam callers from disturbing you. So the way this works is anytime you get a phone call, Google will run that phone number against a database of known spam callers or spam numbers. And if that number matches, it will not even come through to you and your phone will not even ring. So if you deal with a lot of spam callers or you don't even want to bother with dealing with spam callers, definitely a great feature I suggest you enable.
Next, just go back one into those call settings and swipe down until you see contact ringtones. And this is a really cool one because what you can do is create a unique ringtone for any of your contacts. So if there's anybody that you talk to often, maybe your parents, what you can do is just select that contact and then go through this large list of ringtones and apply a unique ringtone to that contact. So now anytime you get a phone call, you'll know right away exactly who's calling you. All right, guys, next what we're gonna do is improve the keyboard on our phone because by default, you can see that it is a little bit limited. We don't have a number row and we can definitely improve on it. So what you wanna do is bring up this keyboard, tap on these squares right here, go to settings and select preferences. And now just enable the number row and that's it. Now, when you go back to your keyboard, you're gonna see that you're gonna have a number row. So now it's gonna be available to you directly from the main keyboard. So you don't need to toggle between the secondary and the primary keyboard. All right, guys, next what we're going to do is enable back tap on our phone, which will allow us to tap the back of our phone in order to take an action. Definitely a really cool feature. And to do this, let's go into our phone settings, swipe down to system. And right here where it says gestures at the top, we have quick tap to start actions. This is disabled by default, but when you enable it, you can see we can now take a screenshot, access our digital assistant, play or pause media, or if we want, we can even open up a specific app on our phone. So if we hit this cog wheel, we will see all the apps we have installed and we can go ahead and select it. So go ahead and set this up to your liking. I'm gonna set it back to screenshot and I'm gonna see that when we double tap the back of our phone, it'll take that action. Now, one thing I don't like about Pixel phones is that they're really noisy. This phone is constantly making noises when you're locking it, unlocking it, when you're tapping things, typing on the keyboard, taking pictures, it's constantly making sounds. So one thing I like to do is to just make it less noisy. And to do this, just go into your phone settings, go to sound and vibrations and swipe down to the bottom until you see system sound and vibrations and just disable things you don't care about. So we got taps and clicks, we got charging sounds and vibrations, screen locking sounds and dial pad tones. I like to disable all of these and now your phone is gonna make much less noise. I also like to remove the shutter sound of when I take a picture. So to do this, we're gonna open up our camera, tap on the settings gear icon right here, tap on the three dots and just disable camera sounds. And there we go, now our phone is going to be making much less noises as we use it. All right, guys, this next setting is exclusive to Pixel phones, and I absolutely love this setting. I wish I had it on my Samsung phone. It is just so great because what you can do is go into your settings, go to sound and vibration, go to vibration and haptics, and enable this feature that says vibrate first, then ring gradually. And this is great because if you ever turned up your ringer on your phone really loud, maybe you were outside or in a loud environment and you just have it really loud, but now you come home and maybe it's late and everybody around you is sleeping. If you forgot to bring those volumes back down and somebody calls you, your phone is going to absolutely blast your ringtone and possibly wake everybody up. But with this setting, what your phone is going to do is vibrate first. And if you don't answer, it will slowly get louder and louder until you answer the phone. All right, guys, next what we're going to do is improve the quality of our camera because by default, the video settings are not set up for the best quality. So if you tap on the video tab, go to settings, you're going to see that by default, it's set to 1080p full HD, but you're definitely going to want to flip this to 4K because we all take lots of videos on our phone and you definitely don't want it in 1080p. Setting it to 4K is going to give you much better quality videos. Now, Pixel phones are known to take some of the best photos out there. They are pretty much known as the phone that delivers the best quality photos. But there's definitely a setting that you're going to want to change because if you're going to be texting those photos to somebody, your phone is going to compress those images and they're just not going to look as good. So what you want to do is select the messaging app, tap on your profile icon right here, go to message settings, and disable this option that says send photos faster because what you can see it says is resolution is reduced for faster sending but why would i want to do that i would rather my photos take a little bit longer to send but come out looking much nicer on the other end when somebody receives them so definitely go ahead and disable this all right guys now if you use a screen protector on your phone you might find that sometimes your phone has a little bit of a harder time registering your taps especially if you accidentally tap a little bit too light and that's obviously because there's now a film between you and the screen but there's a really cool setting that you can change to fix this problem by going into settings go to display and touch and swipe down to touch sensitivity and just enable increased sensitivity and you can see right there it says make your screen more responsive to lighter touches so again if you have a screen protector or you're just naturally a light toucher this is definitely going to help you out and make it easier for your screen to register your taps now this next setting takes just a couple of seconds i do this on all of my phones i don't know why this isn't the default behavior yet but it is to show the percentage of your battery up here so you know exactly how much battery you have and of course to do this you just want to go to your battery settings 
and right there toggle this on and now we can see the exact percentage of how much battery we have left now if somebody ever wants to use your google phone maybe to watch a youtube video or a netflix movie but you don't trust them not to exit that app and go snooping through your personal data there's a really great setting that you can enable to prevent them from doing that and what you want to do is go to your settings Scroll down to security and privacy, go to more security and privacy, and down at the bottom, you'll see an option for app pinning. Go ahead and enable this. And now what you're going to be able to do is, let's say somebody wants to use your phone to watch a YouTube video. You can open up YouTube for them, then go into the background apps, select the icon, and pin this app to your display. And now what you're gonna be able to do is hand your phone over to whoever wants to use it, and they can freely go ahead and use YouTube, but they will not be able to leave the app because if they try to swipe up, you can see that nothing works. And to exit it, they need to swipe up and hold. But when they do that, it will take you back to your lock screen and they will not be able to get into your phone. They will need to give the phone to you so that you can unlock it. And when you do unlock your phone, you will now be able to leave this app. So again, if there's somebody who wants to use your phone, but you just want to be as secure as possible, this is definitely a great setting that you need to know about. All right, guys, and the last setting that you need to enable is one that can save your life. And what you want to do is go into your settings, go down to safety and emergency right there, and make sure to enable some of these important features like this one right here, car crash detection. You can see that this is off by default, but you should definitely go ahead and enable this because if you're, God forbid, ever in a car accident, your phone will be able to use the sensors it has built in to sense that you are in a car accident. And if you're maybe unconscious or you can't reach for your phone, your phone will be able to call for help for you. And you can see right there, it says, if you confirm you need help or don't respond, Pixel will start the actions you select below. And right here at the bottom, it says a call emergency services. And you can also enable these extra features right here. So definitely go through here and enable some of these safety features. You can also add some emergency contacts or add your medical information like your date of birth, blood type, height, weight, and even some more vital things like any allergies that you have or medications that you're on. And this is definitely going to be able to help the paramedics or the doctors who are going to treat you. But there you go, guys. That's going to do it for this video of the very first things that you need to do on your brand new Google Pixel 10 Pro Fold. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for future videos to come, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.